You want it? You got it. Now be very careful what you ask. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. This is today's message. And we're reading from 1 Samuel chapter 8. Okay? This is just a quick reading and I'm going to discuss what we just read. So hang in. Verse 2. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Bathsheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes and perverted judgment. Okay. Now, then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel unto Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us king. We want a king to judge us like all the other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they, what they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Now listen to this. Before you guys, this is Pat speaking now, before you guys decide that it's the president's fault or it's the governor's fault or it's the, the Congress's fault or the Supreme Court or whatever, you know what? God Almighty gave the people what they asked for, even though it was diametrically opposed to him, and it was diametrically opposed to his ways. As he said out of his own mouth, they have not rejected thee, they have rejected me. Now, when you start to get on your high horses, and you start to feel like, oh, this country is going down the toilet, Think about all the things we as a nation have asked for and have allowed that others have asked for. You can't blame one man or one group. You have to look to God and say, if God allowed it, what can you do at that point? When it was within your power to do something about it, did you go out and vote? When it was within your power, did you protest? Did you make your voice heard? Did you pass out all kinds of, of uh, whatever those things are? Um, listen, petitions, that's what I'm looking for. But listen to this, you guys. God allows a lot of things to his people that he has told them straight out. You're going against me now. All right. So when you guys get ready to to uh, to lynch the president and lynch the government and lynch this one and lynch that one and blame this party and blame that party. Remember, God almighty gave the people what they asked. And out of his own mouth, he said, they have not rejected you. They've rejected me. So when you see things going down the toilet in this country, we as a nation are rejecting God Almighty. And we as a church, we need to rise up. We need to rise up and be heard. Then if God still allows it, we know we're in cool with God. But the sad part is, those that are not, when the nitty gritty hits the fan, you better hope you can hear God's voice telling you to duck, baby, because you don't want to be hit by what flies. Okay. Now, I just wanted to read that because we always want to blame the government. We always want to blame the heads of state, and we always want to blame the president, and we want to blame this one. We always want to blame and pass the buck. 
But when it all comes down to it, baby, you're dealing with God Almighty. And if God is willing to give the people the sin they want, then shut your mouth and stop being so judgmental because you might just be bucking against God's judgment. Amen? Okay. What we have to realize is God gave us freedom of choice. No government should take that away. So if the government allows, they're in God's will. Even though what they're allowing is against God. Think about it. It doesn't mean that the government is being sinful. It means that they are doing what God did. They're giving the people what they want. The people want it to be like the world. And if the people in America want to be like the world, and you say we're not supposed to be a dictatorship, and we are a democracy, then by all means, baby, let them have what they want. It's sad, it's tough, but it's true. That's what God did. Okay. There was a story I heard years ago when I did hair. One of my customers told me this story. And this came to my mind while I was going over this message. Three little kids were playing outside. They lived in the country. They lived probably about a half a mile from the brook, the river brook. Their father is getting ready to go to market. So he tells the kids, I want you to stay in the house. Whatever you do, do not go down to the brook while I'm not home. Never do that. Always stay in the house. If I tell you you can play, you stay in the yard. You don't go out of the yard. Now obey me, because I'm saying this for your own good. He goes off to market. Big brother tells little brother, I'm going swimming. I don't care what dad says, I want to go swimming. Little bra says, but dad said we're not supposed to go. Little sis said, I'm going to tell. <laughs> well, big brother threatens little girl, says, whatever you do, you better not tell or I'm going to. So little girl is scared. She's, he's like, I'm never going to talk to you. You'll never be my sister if you tell on me. Well, little sis, she's kind of intimidated by that. She doesn't want to lose the love and affection of her brother, so she keeps her mouth shut. She zips the lip. Little brother wants big brother to like him, so he going to go with big brother because he knows big brother's a great swimmer. And little brother could swim too. So they go down to the brook. Little girl goes with him. Big brother jumps in. Oh, he's splashing around, having a ball. You know how kids do. And I mean, it's just, it's just a wonderful time. And then next thing you know, he gets taken up by the current and he can't stop. He's trying to swim back and he's hollering, help me, help me. He realizes he's in trouble at this point. The water gets real rough and strong. Well, the little brother dives in because he wants to save his big brother. And he drowns with his big brother. But little sis was told, you better not tell. So dad comes home. Sis is at the house. She's got this unholy quietness about her. And dad's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? She can't tell. Because they'll be mad at her. So after dad gets through pushing and prodding, guess what she does? She finally tells him. 
he dashes down to the riverbank, right at the brook. And he keeps going and running down alongside till he finally finds the dead bodies of his two sons. It's too late. They got what they wanted. They did what they wanted in spite of what the father did not want. And what ended up happening was what the father did not want to happen. What consequences are you willing to pay for having it your way? And I'm going to leave it at that. You chew on that here. Just because it feels good and it's fun and it's your right right now, what is your payday going to require of you to fork out of your behind when it's time to deal with those consequences? Think about it.